guys, today I wanted to talk to you not so much about VIB Rouge, but people's reactions to VIB Rouge. I'm not entirely certain when the tier of VIB Rouge was introduced, but I know a lot of people that I watch on YouTube reached VIB Rouge status in 2016 and made it their goal not to hit Rouge in 2017. A lot of them even created little projects, um, you know, kind of like a reverse Rouge, where instead of spending a thousand dollars on makeup, they would use up a thousand dollars worth of makeup. And the one that sticks out of my mind the most is um, Elle from LS, and I love the way she did hers. I love her energy behind all her projects. She's always so positive and motivated, but some of the projects that I saw around that time bothered me a little. It was almost as if they felt shameful about it, almost as if hitting VIB Rouge status was like a brand of gluttony. And um, I just wanted to rationalize it for people. I wanted to just put it into perspective. So I went through the Sephora website and just picked out everything that you would need for basic makeup, like everything that you would need for daily use. Um, plus a couple of options. And um, I will go through those with you. So as I said, I went onto the Sephora website and I picked out all the products that I think you need for a basic collection. Enough products to get you through everyday use, but not so few products that you wouldn't be bored with what you owned. My only stipulation was that the products I picked were ones that I would genuinely, genuinely use myself. And as you can see, I could pick them all out of my own collection. I'm a very big fan of these products. There are a few on this list that I don't have here and I've got substitutions just to represent them, but I will talk about that when I come to them. So I'll just start over here. We have the Becca Backlight Priming Filter, which is $38. The Lancome Tint Adult Ultra which Foundation, which is $47. The Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, which is a tinted moisturizer, um, and this is $30. The Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer, which I would use as an under eye concealer, is $30. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which could be used as an under eye or face concealer, is again $30. The Shimmering Skin Perfector from Becca, um, this particular one is in Champagne Pop, this is $41. The Laura Mercier um, Matte Radiance Highlight is $42. And I know a lot of people use and love this one. It's the one that's just, it's a very beautiful highlight. You can, it can be natural or you can build up to be super shimmery. The Laura Mercier Powder Foundation, which I would use as a setting powder. This is $42. The Candle Glow Press Powder, which I would use for touch-ups, is $38. I picked three blushes so that you have colour options. We have a more um, plummy tone. This is Sin from NARS. A pink, which is Deep Throat from NARS. And a, a more brown neutral earthy tone and this is Wild Honey from Becca. The NARS blushes are $30 each and the Becca blush is $32. The bronzer, this is NARS Casino and this bronzer is $40. I love this bronzer because you can either, you can use it as a light hand or you can use it full force when you're tanned and it works both ways. Onto eye products, of course you have your eye primer. I chose the Urban Decay Primer Potion which is $22. For eyeshadow over here, we have the Viseart palette and this is the Neutral Matte palette and this is $80. And I paired these two together because this is all mattes and then the Naked palette, you've got all your lid shades and a little bit of extra going on there. And the Naked palette is $54. So that should cover all your eyeshadow needs bar any additional things you want to add. For pencil liner, we have an Estee Lauder double wear pencil in coffee, and that is $25. 
We have the Bobbi Brown Creamy uh, Cream Liner, which is $27. I'm just using a, a Maybelline one to represent it at the moment because I don't have a Bobbi Brown one to show. For mascara, we have the Clinique High Impact Mascara, and this is $18. I also picked out two, um, two cream shadow pencils. Uh, these are actually the number seven Stay Perfect because I don't actually have any full size Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks to represent. But if you wanted a light one and a dark one, so the Caviar Sticks would be $29 each. Onto brows, I picked out the Anastasia Dip Brow, which is $18. Unless you wanted two products or, or a brow pencil, you could probably swap that product out and it would roughly cost the same with most products on Sephora. Lastly, we have lip products. We have a lip balm, which I picked the Rosebud Salve, which I don't actually have one of. Um, but the best, closest thing I have in my possession is a Nivea lip butter and it about costs the same in dollars. And the lip balm salve, the rosebud salve I should say, costs $7 if I didn't already say that. Um, I picked three lip liners. So you have a nude, a pink and a red. These are all from Estee Lauder and again they are $25 each. I picked two matte lip creams. Um, these are the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Matte Lip Creams and these are $19 each. I picked a single gloss. Um, I went with the most neutral, um, easy to wear and unoffensive gloss. This particular one happens to be a Dior gloss and it's $30. I love the Dior formula. It's got high shine, it's got good staying power and it's not particularly overly sticky and it feels really nice on the lips. And lastly, we have lipstick, and I picked four Smashbox Be Legendary lipsticks just for options. Um, I don't know what colours these ones are, I just kind of picked four up for representation. But say so you'd have a light nude, a dark nude, a pink and a red. These are $21 each. And all of this combined comes to a total of $1,006. So if you got rid of your whole collection and started the year with just a basic collection like this, a grand total of 33 products, it's, it's by no mean ex means excessive, you've already hit the VIB Rouge status just buying basics. And I also went and wrote everything down and pointed out all the things that you would need to repurchase throughout the year. With repurchases, you would have to replace your primer, most definitely. You'd probably have to replace your foundation a couple of times. You'd have to replace your concealers, maybe your pressed powder, maybe your um, tinted moisturizer. You might have to replace your bronzer, maybe your most used eyeshadow pencil, your primer potion. You'd probably have to replace your, eye, your pencil liner, your mascara definitely would be repurchased a couple of times. Um, you might have to replace your most used lipsticks throughout the year. You might have to replace your gloss being as there's only one. Possibly your most used lip liner, your nude lip liner. And with those repurchases, it comes to a grand total of $1,536 just purchasing things that you would use on an everyday basis. As I said, this is based on the scenario that you had no makeup and you just wanted to buy your basics and replace them as you would naturally run out of them. But this isn't taking into account maybe things that you would want to buy extra. Maybe you want to buy a green eyeliner. Maybe you want a purple eyeshadow or a purple lipstick or you want a coral blush on top of the blushes you've already picked. These things will all add up. And this isn't including skincare that you may purchase from Sephora. I mean, I bought a jar of Glam Glow is almost $70 if I remember rightly. Is it that seems a bit excessive. I'm sure there are cheaper face masks from Sephora, but these are products that people are driven to. People are attracted to them. This is what drives up your potential of achieving VIB Rouge status. Just buying things that you would use normally. If you wanted to buy a bottle of perfume, hair products, body care, if you were interested in the Brazilian Boom Boom Cream, for example. What I'm trying to point out is 
if you're just buying things and using them, it's not a brand of glutton. You're, you shouldn't feel ashamed of what you've spent at Sephora. It's your money. You're buying things that you're interested in. You're buying things that you're using, enjoying and loving. If that's the case, awesome. I'm well aware that there are people out there like myself who have extensively excessive collections and we are not the benchmark you should hold yourself against as as regular viewers. I'm not necessarily talking to other YouTubers here but other people that are just just general everyday Janes buying their makeup from Sephora. Don't feel bad if you hit the IB Rouge. It's not it's not a, a tremendously horrible thing. It just means you like what you like, you like the good stuff in life and you enjoy what you purchase and uh, yeah. So that's my public service announcement over. I just wanted to point these things out to make people not feel quite so ashamed or have any reason to feel any shame at all that they've hit VIB Rouge size. It's a fairly accessible level of purchasing to get to, especially if you shop at Sephora regularly for your things. So yeah, I'd love it if you guys left your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Let me know what how you feel about this topic and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye.